Oh, it's electric. This is Mind Pump, everybody. By the way, I got a great giveaway in today's episode. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. Make it a good comment. Underneath this video, if we pick your comment, you'll get a free pair of Felix Gray blue light blocking glasses. And they look amazing. Felix Gray makes the best looking blue light blocking glasses you'll find anywhere. By the way, they don't change the color of the world. They're not orange or red. They're clear, but they are effective. So leave that comment. By the way, we do this stuff all the time. We give away so much stuff. It's insane. Some people think we've lost our mind, but the only way you can win is when you comment in the first 24 hours. So that means you need to subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so that you know when we post these videos. One more thing before we start the podcast, we are still running the biggest promotion we've run ever. So many people are signing up for this. You got to go check it out. So Matt's Anabolic is 50% off and our Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off. Both of those are half off. Go find them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code April Special with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. Yeah. I like that these new chairs turn. It is huge. Like this. Like they turn. Right? You like the little swivel? Because let's be honest. I, I feel like we've I made uh, a point. For I don't that. have the best mobility. So instead of having to like, uh, my neck, I just go like this now. We've yeah. officially uh, leveled up, huh? Yeah, yeah, I like these, dude. Are these real? It's real. They're real? Yeah, it's not It's not fake. It's not pleather. It's leather leather? Yeah, can't you tell? Leather. By the way, wow. it feels. But they were, these are grass-fed cows, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're happy cows. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, we're not, they, we're not oh, fucking around. Oh, look what we got over here, boys. What is this? Look what we got over it's here, nice, dude. It's a nice box. It's official. Bing. Oh, uh, look at that. Ho -ho. Bing. Did you, it's the hard copy. Did you autograph one for us? <laughs> no. Gonna autograph one for you. No, on, you I, gotta practice. Dude. I, yeah, oh, I want you to sign me. Come sign on, one. guy. Uh -huh. I'll do whatever you need. What buddy. if you become famous, dude? Huh? Stupid. Know. You right. know what's? You know what's? Uh, you're uh, already like a. a you know what's a weird? J list. At, J list. Am I J list? Yeah. <laughs> How far podcast. down the alphabet do I go? <laughs> Where do we fall in that? You know what? You know what's weird though is that there's a there's like a picture of me in the inside. You know? Yeah. You know how weird that's going to be to go to a bookstore and then be like, what the? Fuck? That's going to be cool. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even like this picture though. I look like an asshole. I mean, that's going to be the coolest thing oh, to here's see. Here's the that guy. You need to do the Justin Timberlake move too. I told you about. Well, why I tell? Well, I show up and oh, I put like a naked picture of you or me in here. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Well, that's gonna sell that. more books. Uh, so Adam, yeah, yeah it'll be one it. of hey, yeah, like back in the day. Remember, remember, you open it like this. How like, many books hey, did you hey, sell for that lady that put you on the cover? I totally exactly. Right? Now, oh, okay. Anybody who ever watched movies in the eighties or nineties, you didn't have to see what was on the page, but you knew what they were looking at when they did this. And they do this, and the page would and fold it flops out. down. <laughs> okay, so for all the kids out there who yeah. don't have any idea what Maybe that it's is, it's a timeline. Dirty magazines often had a centerfold. centerfold. So you'd open it, but then you'd unfold this big picture of the naked lady. I love how we're educating the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it was a naked lady picture. Yeah, are we yeah, officially going right now, Doug? Are you on? Oh, it's been on. Oh, oh. We've been on, bro. Oh, okay. You Sorry, gotta be ready. I, I knew that. Sorry. You gotta be ready, my friend. Dude, I'm I always uh, ready. Can I just tell you uh that um man, sometimes YouTube comments really make you feel insecure, don't they? Oh no, what did YouTube do? <laughs> Damn, dude. I haven't been paying attention other than the nice just, ones. Just sp talking specific shit about like my body. What? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, That's what they do. Yeah, you fucking your chest looks weird. Uh, yeah, you lie. You got gyno. I'm like oh, gyno. Yeah. I don't got gyno. Oh, me. it's that it's that terrible gray shirt that you wear. That's why. Yeah, you can't I wear know. that anymore. Yeah, I don't. Thanks, yeah. asshole, for well, it. Well, I'm telling validating you, it. I'm telling. <laughs> <laughs> I Adam's mean, like, oh, I know why he said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks, Cause it's true. It looks bad. He had one <laughs> droopy nipple yeah, that yeah, day. It's yeah. it's, they're, they're good. I got clean. I got clear good. Yeah, man. yeah. No, you don't have guy though. No, I don't get guy. Just a weak ass chest. That's it's all. Damn I mean, it. It's, uh, it's totally different. Damn, it ain't gonna change. I've been <laughs> training. Snap. I've been training it for decades. <laughs> it ain't going anywhere. You we don't. Put, put, you don't put that much focus though on bullshit. Chest. No, this, it's the one body part I've never missed ever. Really? Ever? Really? Uh, I don't. Course, I would disagree with that. What do you mean? Uh, you you train your legs and back like a monster. Yeah. My legs. I just started. You train hard. your legs and back like the way like, Justin's like I do shoulders. triceps and shoulders. Yes. And, and chest. Yeah, bro. We all have I our things. Like Justin's that. all the like the way I train. Like, and he and names all the body like parts. All the other chest, ones. Shoulders. <laughs> all the other ones that I don't see you do. Yeah, bro. The <laughs> amount of the amount of volume you put on your legs and back is. I put a lot of volume. Trust me. Is I know crazy this. compared to your I'll chest. I'll show you the charts. I have it all charted out. What? The amount of volume you put on your chest? Yeah, yeah. You still writing it all out? So, no, and unless, maybe. unless, come on, dude. I'll unless you all your workouts at home that we don't see, which is once or twice a week, are oh, all dude. chest workouts for you two hours. You think I purposely don't work my chest? No, I just, I just don't. gave up. I, 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 <laughs> I think that I just. It, I don't like, care anymore. Eh. 
I yeah. think it gets, it gets kind of, covered by the wife. I think it gets the kind of attention that my calves get. You know what I'm saying? Somewhere around there. Oh. <laughs> you know, so no, way the more. Than that. The wife Peter adds like what you know, like a little little you know. Centimeter. I actually have uh, the That's perfect. The strategy, I actually though. have the perfect body for the wife Peter. I really do. I swear to God, I put it on <laughs> seriously, a, yeah. and it looks amazing. <laughs> Did you just? Tell you Why don't we have a Haynes uh, sponsorship? We at need this you. point. Right? I don't think you could call. Uh, me. What do I have the perfect body for? Huh? <laughs> I don't have the perfect body for you, anything. For, for, like a singlet for say. Yeah. Yeah. For a onesie. Yeah. Onesie. Yeah. And the perfect body. You for got the perfect body for yeah. the cougars. Yeah. You have to oh, say yeah. it all, all breathy like that, oh, dude. Cougars. You know, you guys always tease me about being nerdy. So I was having this conversation with my son. And we're talking about like nerdy stuff, right? So we're having fun, and uh, I'm like, man, you know what magazine I used to read? Doug, if you open the group text, there's a picture of the magazine I subscribed to when I was 12. Okay, I want you guys to see the cover of this mag. I got every single. Edition of this magazine. I threw them all away. I shouldn't have because now they you sent to the group thread. I don't see. That. I just sent it uh, right before oh, we started. Oh, okay. And uh, I, this is what I used to read when I was twelve. Just to give you guys an idea of what you're dealing with right now. The magazine was called Omni, and it was like oh, I've heard of that deep science uh-huh. and some science fiction. Yeah. So I'm twelve years old and. This what, is what's the, funny is look at, look at the I cover. read a lot of the same shit you do. Did you? So I was twelve. I was reading yeah, this shit. Look yeah, at this. that. That and like uh, the science journal. The, the 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 robot the scientific proletariat. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, a powder that defeats cancer. Like weird shit. Sober up pill. <laughs> I'm twelve. I'm reading this. Oh, this is cool. Whoa, this is crazy. I used to also watch the show, and this is what my son and I were laughing over. Do you guys remember the show on TV called Beyond Two Thousand? No, no, I didn't okay. see that. So we're laughing because. 2000s, like you know, it was 21 years ago. Yeah. But when 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 you're in the 80s and 90s, anything beyond anything 2000 above was like that's when we're gonna have flying cars, we're gonna be robots, and oh, Back to the Future was like I forget what exact year it was, but when we passed that, it was like mind blowing. Yeah. So I told him that, and he's like, Beyond 2000, I'm like, trust me, I was super futuristic back in the <laughs> back in the 90s. Dude. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the best things on TV. How do you come across something like that as a kid? Like, did, where did you see someone? I've never even seen that magazine before. I was at I don't know. I probably I was at the some science fair. No, I never went to <laughs> science fair. I, I I was somewhere with magazines, and I picked. Up and, and it probably talked about aliens and some other and then tech and I was like oh yeah. this is super cool and to I told me. my mom please skip the and then of course my mom's like oh this is smart you remember that that Con- you ever watch Conan O'Brien yeah uh, he had that one bit where it was like in the year two thousand <laughs> yeah. and then he would like go off on all these futuristic things about yeah. like yeah how about jets and cars yeah, and stuff. The New York School Board will crack down on students who carry guns by insisting they use silencers while in the library. Let's be honest, it's disappointing, isn't it? Very disappointing. This is a very disappointing. The although, future that I was promised is not the same. Although, what we got. okay, so if, if have you seen? So there's a, a few clips of, of this one guy who literally has like the Iron Man setup. He's basically, I think he's with the Navy, but. Oh, they, he flies? They had him, yeah. They had him on a that. boat, and then he has like these two. I just saw that. Yeah, these two sort of jet, I, I don't even know what it's propulsion things on his arms. He, he, landed just, on an, he landed on another boat? Yeah, yeah, I saw it's that. It's not that fast or anything, though. I feel like you could shoot him. I know, it's clunky, <laughs> like it's a, but dude, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's the beginning. Close. It's, it's, it's the beginning of this. Yeah. No, like, it's like, real close. Like, finally, let's work on some cool shit. You know, instead of all this uh, whatever, like like lame stuff. I get more impressed by this, this just your regular run of the mill, uh, commercially available drones. Yeah. Those are my brother is totally into them. Mm. Those things are crazy. Yeah. You lock it in on someone and it just follows them. Well, yeah. it's just weird how they can how they can use tons of them together, organized to create like swarms. Yeah, swarms like like everything you've seen in, in cartoons so, and stuff, where they like make like schools of them and then they like. What's create your guys' words. What's your guys' theory on like what uh um what industry does like robotics disrupt the most first? Like who? who where, oh, where, the first one. Shipping. Yeah, like the ah, mo- oh, you got me. Yeah, it's, damn. It's I was gonna easy. say that. Trucking and shipping. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, first. definitely. Yeah. So, so right now you have truckers who play a very vital role, right, in producing and in, in bringing products across the country. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be the first. As soon as they have uh, approved AI or whatever self-driving trucks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's and gonna- then they're already working on uh, like exoskeleton uh, type suits and things for 
super soldiers. Like if you, you could Google that too, it's or you'll cool. like you'll work at Amazon. You'll have a suit on. You like, just like heavy you're, things. You're immediately like double ten x the strength of what you normally would be. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So now, what do you think? Do you have an? Do you have a theory? No, I like. So I mean, I see the 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 drones delivering boxes and things like that. That's yeah. kind of already happening. Which I mean, that is a lot of. I mean, how many delivery trucks are in? work for FedEx and work for Amazon Prime already is there's a ton of those. So. Yeah, what it'll probably is my guess. What it would look like would be a self-driving truck mm -hmm. and then it would park and then swarms of delivery drones drones would come out the back. Yeah. Right, hit a whole neighborhood. Hit a whole neighborhood, come back and then whatever. <laughs> so what do you think the next industry? I think it'd be, it'd be cool to see uh, like robots uh, getting involved with a lot of like the 3D printed type buildings. So they're, you know, maybe like building more structures. And then so it's like, it, you know, like people don't have to have a lot of manpower anymore. They just have robots take care of it. Wow, that'd be what cool. What are you thinking? Yeah. What, what? Explain that So again? you want to build a building. You have the, the, the blueprints. Yeah. You plug it in and then the robots go. And you have the robot build. workers with the machines. Like oh, the machines. Like put out like all construction workers. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. When I think of disruptive, I think of like what is going to put out the most people out of work by by this, like what industry. Uh -huh. And I think delivery stuff, construction is interesting. I wouldn't even have thought of that actually, but with 3D printing yeah. and things like that. You know, I don't know how far, we're pretty far though, I think from You know, that. the fear yeah. around robots is, is <laughs> and funny I, to me. It is cheaper though. And I also you. think this, I also think that it's going to open a new market for uh still the human hand to do things you know like we're talking about like art and stuff like that being to be replicated like i, mm -hmm. I think there's still going to be like shoes at one at one point you know all the shoes are going to be 3d printed like no problem but then i think there's going to be something about like custom because we value that oh this was made by a human exactly yeah. probably yeah i think it'll open it i think they'll i think it'll be great what I, why i think it'll be great is because it will for people who can't afford, that's actually a good point because, like, if you get a car that's super expensive, and someone says this was all handmade, that's right. Yeah, like the, every seat was hand stitched, Ooh. which is a slow ass <laughs> process. <laughs> You'll get it next year. Yeah, but yeah, you'd yeah. oh you oh yeah, I want that because it was made by hand. Right, right. That's a good point. Yeah, so I I, I, I get excited about that stuff, right? Because I think that a lot of people get all freaked out, like oh, it's going to put people out of jobs or things like that. And it's like no, I think it'll just it'll change the market. It'll, of course, it'll what it'll do, which is amazing. It's drive people, us back to skill-driven work. Well, somebody that couldn't afford a car or couldn't afford a pair of shoes will now be able to get it because it'll be so cheap because you can 3D print yeah. it and things like that. But then it'll still open up the higher-end market for people that want something custom and made by hand. Sure. No, every every time there's an innovation, it puts people out of business. Like when the when the wrist rock, uh, watch right became a thing, that put pocket oh, watches. Wrist rocket. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that put uh, you know uh, pocket wa watch makers kind of out of business, right? Cars put wagon. Yeah, but that's another great point, though. There's a reason why why a Rolex watch is on average ten thousand dollars? Sure, because another handcrafted like something that takes a long time. To, Perceived value. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you can go buy a Timex, you know, digital watch at you know at some Target or whatever like that mm -hmm. for what twenty bucks or less. Yeah. yeah. But then you could also spend tens of thousands of dollars on one. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see if uh, these robots will screw up the way that I, I I had Doug like grab a few of these pictures for me like of. Uh, Design fails. I was watching the show with, with my kids, and like they went off on all these like really poorly designed things. And like there was uh, some banks that had their ATMs uh, way too high for you to even reach it. And I'm like, no way. And then there's like multiple examples of like banks where people like jumping up to put their card in. What? Yeah, and like climbing on somebody's back to to bring it up. I've seen some of these before. These design fails where it's uh, where it's like there's like a, a door, and then it, you open it, and there's nothing there. Yeah, or there's like a toilet in front. Uh, I guess okay. this happens all the time. It's wait, wait, wait. Just, okay, who designed? I don't understand. Explain this to me. So, like, when they're going through the the plans, it on paper, like, there's there's some kind of like somebody doesn't oversee it, and, and it gets passed through, and oh, the so builders like, start building it, and all of a sudden the dimensions are are off. Oh, there's like math. The math is off. The math's off. Yeah, and but the guy, the people building yeah, like, it, they just follow the instructions. Like, <laughs> just like on his back, <laughs> trying to like. That's real, right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw one where there was literally there was literally a toilet in front of like a pole. <laughs> It's way up here. That's I'm gonna hilarious. get my money. I didn't know that. I, 
<laughs> Can you imagine? That's like, really happened? Yeah. I've uh, seen stuff like this. I mean, it's it, so stupid. What, how much of a moron, though, do you have to be if you're the contractor and you're putting in and you're- yeah, like, How do you not spot that and be yeah, like, okay, we got to alter this? Because you had to be on a ladder putting yeah. it up. You know what I'm saying? Well, think about it this way. Right. You're, you're the guy or girl building this, right? You see it and you're like, oh, they fucked up. You're like, do I tell them and then not yeah. work? Because then they'll stop. Like, yeah, I'll just do it. That's, that's got to be, what, yeah. that's gotta be yeah. what happens. Of course. Yeah. yeah. They're like, they know. They're it was like, in the plans, not my fault. Yeah. I just follow. I just do what I told. Hey, listen, I'm just here to do what you tell me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought maybe this was for super Must, I'm not, not paid to think, <laughs> okay? I'm just here to build the nine-foot ATM. I thought, I thought, Only for seven-footers. I thought this was NBA ATM. I don't know. What's going on? You know, it's so hard to get my money. Uh, you know, back to the... to the uh, NBA? To the, no, to the, to the robot thing. Oh. The, and we've talked about this on the podcast. There's all this fear that machines are going to take our jobs or we're all going to be unemployed. Such a silly... Uh, fear. It's not. Kind of, that's not how it works. If and, and I, I, this is the way I always put it, and it, it blows people away. But if robots do everything for us, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe you don't work because no, you, don't, you work when you want to. You don't necessarily have to, mm -hmm. and robots do everything for you. That's the like the Jetsons. You know, that's like the. Well, the it ultimately should drive the prices down on things, right? It should make things way more affordable. Tremendous. So things that you can't afford technically right now, if it was all built by robots, it, they would have to drive. They would drive the price down. Well, think about what happens yeah. when when markets can start to produce things and they start to compete, compete, and then things become free. Which lots of things today are free that cost money before. Right. What ends up happening is they use those the free product. Now how do they what do they how do they make money off of it? Well now they use the free product to deliver advertising. So how are we going to get how are we going to make money off of giving people free stuff? Oh, I know. We'll use this to advertise for things. So there's always ways. Is basically so. What I'm speaking of to. money, I want to talk about the conversation that we were just starting to have before this podcast oh, started. Oh, is this gonna? Do we need the conspiracy my, my, my music? Money. Uh, I don't know if it's like conspiracy as much as it is like uh, speculating on where where this could go. Right. So we were reading an article uh, about digital currency and that the federal reserve, I mean, right now, all the banks, all the central banks, are all the central about. banks are starting to, uh, you know, decide what they're going to do pivot wise with, uh, digital currency. Cause the way, obviously with Coinbase going the way it did, and they're all happened. basically saying that they're going to have digital currencies in the next few years. Right. So, and then, and then I also read that the federal reserve is a couple years out from potentially going that direction too. So what does that mean for us? And why, why do you think, that's a, a very scary place to be. Okay, so <coughs> the the dream of a digital currency is wonderful for governments. Remember, the central banks uh, have an interesting relationship with governments. They're not run necessarily by the government, but they do have a, a relationship in which the government allows them to have a monopoly, right? So no other bank, for example, is allowed to make dollars. Uh, if you do, it's called counterfeit, and the government will punish you. So essentially what we've done is we've uh, we've created through force – a monopoly for creating our money, which allows the Federal Reserve to get away with and do basically whatever they want. So, and for, for people who aren't familiar, you can read about, you know, like, for example, the Federal Reserve is not a federal uh, agency. It's like federal, it's like FedEx. It's yeah. just called that. It's just which, a bank. Which I love it's a private that they bank. use that name. Right. Fed Up is a good book. Yeah, that's a good one. And The Fed by, by Ron Paul <clears throat> kind of breaks it down as well. Actually, The Creature from uh, Jekyll Island, uh, read that. That'll tell you all about the creation mm -hmm. of all this. So, so the dream of a digital currency is this. Think about how many millions, billions, maybe trillions of dollars worldwide are lost because of transactions that can't be traced. Cash, for example, mm -hmm. right? Cash deals are big, right? Well, if all currency is digital, it's all 100% traceable. traceable. And that's ultimate all control. Taxable. <laughs> is that is that control. true though? If it's if it's on blockchain, I thought that was the idea that it keeps it from. The, you think this? You think the the official Federal Reserve currency? Like they're not going to have access to it. You think they're going to make yeah. it untraceable? Of course. Of course. So do you it. think that's the way it would? So eventually, what it would go is basically just a digital dollar. Then it's no longer so no paper. No. The, the no way no we're looking at it right now, what's ha what I see happening is uh, private entities are starting to create their own. Uh, cryptocurrency on blockchain. And I, I thought that, that we were moving in this direction of like, <clears throat> that you would have, like, for example, we'd have mind pump dollars, which would not be dollars, it would be crypto. And we we would we would decide how valuable a, a, a single coin is worth in, in mind pump world. 
or buying something from us. Pump and then coins. you'd have yeah, but ultimately Facebook would you just, have that, Netflix would have, all these companies would have kind of their- But ultimately you trade it for dollars <clears throat> still. Even with Bitcoin, you could still buy some stuff with Bitcoin, but not much. Typically, if you invest in Bitcoin, when you're ready to make money off of it, right. you well, trade it for dollars. What we decided, the, uh, obviously what we decide right now that, that determines the value of Bitcoin is based off the dollar. Well, it's, right? it's, we it's, well the dollar, it, that's where we see the value, right? right. But Bitcoin's based off of its supply and demand, which we see, and by the way, it crashed. Uh, recently because there was this outage in China. I don't know if you guys saw this. They have some of the the, the, the biggest Bitcoin mining operations in the world over there. Wow. So Bitcoin mining is where they go through mm. and they try to create more Bitcoin through following the algorithm. and spends, It's like a tremendous amount of energy, by the way, to do this. And I guess they had a power outage, which, uh, which caused people to liquidate their Bitcoin. So you saw the, the value of Bitcoin drop actually uh, pretty considerably. I think it went from like 60-something to 50 mm. um, in a short period of time. But anyhow, with these uh, digital currencies from the, central, uh, from the central banks, from the Federal Reserve and central banks of other countries, what, they're, what they'll do is they're not going to have it plus the dollar. They're going right. to have it to take, get rid of the dollar. Right. Okay, now here we go. Put your... Put your <laughs> okay, so what does that do to the other currencies like the Bitcoins and, and Dodge Coins and all these other... Right, uh, that's why. That's where I was going. Currencies. Those are always... Uh, they could always succumb to uh, government regulation. In other words... So let's go immediately to like black market it, stuff. Right. So if the US government all of a sudden says, that's it, Bitcoin's illegal, you're not allowed to trade in it, you're not allowed to own it, you're not allowed to whatever... You're just, it's basically now just a black market. So uh, then, tool. okay, now if that happens, then it's really not that different than where we're at right now because right now, cash is that, right? Cash, the ability for you and I to exchange cash, cash right. is not it's still recognized everywhere. Right, is, 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 is recognized, is not traceable. So if the government comes out and says, okay, here's our official coin or currency that we're going to do and says, okay, nothing else will be accepted anymore, but we still agree, you and I, that we trade it's them. It's still very different okay. because if you have cash, then it's accepted everywhere. And you don't have to trade that cash for something else in order to use it. There's no steps, in other words. Let's say in a theoretical future, the Federal Reserve makes a digital currency and they're like, that's it, no more dollar. This is what we're converting to. By the way, all other digital currencies are now banned. No one can accept them, whatever. But you're like, fuck, I got Bitcoin. I want to do some, I want to pay my contractor Bitcoin. I don't want, you know, he wants to make, you know, whatever, like you would pay him cash. Yeah. If he accepts, first off, he has to have, find a way to be able to accept it and store that Bitcoin, but then it has no value except for on the black market. So for him to get to take it to to use it, right. like, buy a house or buy a car, he would have be, to be find a black market way to convert it to the new digital cash, the new digital dollar. Yeah, but you, you, that's kind of the same though right now. If you go and you make a uh, million dollars selling drugs. A million dollars, yes. If you go big money, you have to launder it. Right. But think about all the waiters and waitresses and gardeners and, and, and garage sales. and I mean, it's a lot of money that gets moved back and forth that they don't that they can't trace. They have no idea where cash is going mm -hmm. with that kind of stuff. Now you're right, you make you know 100 you know, 100,000 dollars a million dollars, you got to find clever ways of of laundering it as a whole whatever. Right, cuz you can't go run out and buy yeah, a car and, with that. Yeah, but with 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 Bitcoin what we're talking about is I'm sure drug dealers and stuff, big money. But if you're like the average, you know, your plumber, you're like, hey, let me just give you, you know, fifty dollars worth of Bitcoin. He's like, well, I can't do anything with that. You got to pay me in digital currency, and it's all traced. Now, I think what mm. scares me the most about this is what what points in that direction is what's happening right now with us printing money. Because if if it is if now it, it all makes sense, like a fire right, sale, right? Yeah. If the government knows it's going this direction, if the right? central bank if they, if knows, they, if they're having conversations that we're all aware, oh, unaware of right now, of like, oh, this is this is our projected date. This is when this is going to happen. Yeah. Let's say it's four years, three years down the road. Let's say it's going to take to get to this place. Then, what what I mean, why not print crazy amount of? Because eventually, it's going to be worth nothing anyway. So let's yes. go. Let's go bananas. So historically speaking, all fiat currencies, a fiat yeah. currency is- Has a, always crashed. Yeah, always. A, a fiat currency is a currency that's not backed by any anything solid, right? Mm -hmm. So the dollar used to be backed by gold. We broke that that final you know, line decades ago or whatever, where it was just paper. The dollar has lost something like 90-something percent of its value in comparison to hard assets like silver or gold, right? Since we've done that. So the dollar already- is down, 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 down. And I think, and they know this. They know the dollar is going to crash. So what are they doing? They're like, okay, we'll have this digital currency. This is my theory. We're going to have this digital currency. Um, let's have a good time with this dollar. It's going down anyway. Let's 
blow it out and and inflate the shit out of it. Who cares? Because all of our friends are the first ones to spend it. All the big money people right. are going to buy property and shit like that before stuff <coughs> explodes. Mm. Then everybody else is going to be left like, what the fuck? Then when they say, sorry, it's a new digital currency, trade in all your cash, tr- your bank account. Everything's going to get converted to the digital currency. By the way, it's now th- worth this much. We will determine the value. So this is potentially what could what could happen so that's my now uh, now what what's to stop and we got demonetized yeah, and now <laughs> everybody just took a shit real now quick. now oh. i know right well is it would still be considered fiat money though now even as as a as a coin right i mean because it's not backed by any any hard correct. asset correct so there's nothing the only difference is we're just it, starting the cycle over and not only that but it's all very it's all extremely traceable every single whatever dollar you have mm-hmm. Every quarter, everything you spend your money on, they know every single step with the that, click of a button. I guess that's the part that I, I don't just, under, I don't understand is because I I thought that was the whole purpose of blockchain was to make it untraceable and untrackable. Blockchain is different because it's decentralized, right? It's supposedly, supposedly mm-hmm. it's decentralized. Again, I think it was created as a way to get us to go in this direction anyway. Yeah, but I, I see a counter though to all this in that it's very susceptible to attacks. Right or, or to hackers or to uh, uh, EMPs or, or infrastructure with uh, you know like taking out our power. Now what? Now 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 what? What kind of value do we have? I know. To, right? to well, exchange? if you store it off something on a hard drive, there's ways to just like you could take money and you could store it in a safe. Mm. So technically, it's it's very similar. Now a central place that does all of this so digital currency. power source and all that. Right. So yeah. let's say you're, you're, you have, you, you bank with, all, you know, all the bank store now, everybody's money. Mm-hmm. It's all digital. Theoretically, yeah, you could wipe out, you know, everything, all the, all the money that's in there and people would have to start at zero or they'd have to figure out a way to, but who knows? Who knows? Right. Yeah. So all of it doesn't sound good. By the way, <laughs> by the way, here's the deal. Central banks that control digital currency, right? So let's say we're now 20 years in the future. All currency now is digital, and you know the U.S. has its own central bank, Europe has its own central bank, China has its own, and it's all digital, right? Everything's traced, everything's controlled that way. You are like one small step away from a world currency, mm-hmm. and if you control the world with the world currency, oh boy, you got a lot of power. You got to look into the amount. Now, technically, don't we already kind of do that though with with the dollar? What do you mean? Because it's the it's it's the, everybody. Still, ba- there's still exchange rates and stuff, though. Uh, yeah, but everybody bases off of our dollar. That's the reason why it's, we've been able to keep printing and be okay with it. Not because everybody nec- still accepts it as a valuable. You're right, and, and for the most part, not all, but for the most part. But uh, it's if a country decides that they want to come out with their own currency, back it by gold. Although, and historically. When countries have done that, you know, we've found reasons to invade them. I don't know, like yeah, Libya, weird. You know? <laughs> for example. Huh? Yeah, so, but I mean, on down there? it's very interesting to me. So this all pieced together, right? We're going to print the shit out of money. Oh, we know it's going gonna, it's gonna to crash anyway. Let's, let's just have a good time with it. Come out with our own digital currency. Now everybody's kind of used to Bitcoin. It's not that big of a deal. When that happens, nope, you can't use Bitcoin anymore. You can't use Dogecoin. You can't use any of this other stuff anymore. This is the currency, by the way, the money you had in cash, this is what it's valued. Oh, you had more cash? Why don't you pay taxes on that? Show us what it is. No, I don't want it. Like it's gonna be really weird, dude. Eee. It'll be a very, very interesting <laughs> <laughs> Can you take us somewhere else, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go You're there because me I out, mean dude. we were just having this conversation before we got on the podcast. I'm like, we I, I wanna finish that conversation because it's very interesting to me. And when I, so because I probably, out of us uh, three, I probably watch the real estate market the most. And I'm, I'm, I mean, something that I'm just baffled by is that it's just, it's not showing any signs. I know. No, no slowing down. Yeah. And I mean, I, and I've been, I've been watching real estate for a very long time. And there's always these kind of, you know, peaks and valleys. And it seems to going be like accelerating. It is. And that, it, that, it, it makes no sense other than like if it is because of the, the printing of money happening and a lot of like smart investors Bro. realizing yeah. that this is, because that's there, what I see. There's not a lot of fear of everything uh, <clears throat> bursting. What's not happening right now is this. What's not happening is there's a bunch of young millennials that are now in the place because this they, they theorize that some of this is from this right the, the the millennials are the largest group of people that are in the age now that can afford to buy homes and they're all out shopping for their first homes okay so that's a that's you know 20 something percent the other 80 something percent is like investors and people that are have lots of money and that see the writing on the wall mm-hmm. and that and they are just 
buying and, and people are doing ridiculous things. They're they are paying uh without it, in, no contingencies. I no no appraisal, yeah. no nothing. It's all about speed. Paying over yeah, paying over 30, 40%. When you see stuff like that, you gotta scratch your head and go like it makes no inset like no, I, we well, have we have like numbers that we go by. We look at it. It has to make mathematical sense. Okay, if we're gonna do this, it's gotta pan out by three to five percent cap rate, blah 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 blah. Right. And there's so many people that are coming in just ignoring all logic when it comes to investing. And these are investors. So what does that tell you? Mm -hmm. It tells you that they don't even give a shit about that right now because they're thinking- They want assets. Exactly. They're Hard thinking assets. three, five, 10 years down the road. They know that that's going to be Dude, so important. Behind where mm -hmm. my where I grew up, my parents' house, right? San Jose. Now, I know San Jose is expensive. There's a house for sale. It wasn't- it's not, Again, it's a tra these are track homes, right? They're not mansions. So if you live in another place in the country, this may sound crazy, but this a four-bedroom track home- Listed for 1.2 million, which is already crazy, right? They got 17 offers, 15 were cash. You know how much they sold it for? How much? 1.4. Two hundred thousand yeah. dollars over That's a ridiculous saying. asking That's what I'm cash. And, and my it, dad is like, dude, he goes, this is crazy. What should and I? And it won't like even this? appraise for that right now. No, that's why. It's no. so, that's why I'm saying it's like it doesn't. I've I've never seen this in at least in my lifetime of paying attention to this, and maybe it's only been what. 10, 10, 10 years or so that I was really like watching the real estate market, maybe 10, 15. I don't, I do not ever remember seeing it like this I know. crazy and ridiculous. So you, you add in what we're talking about that we're theorizing about what could happen with digital currency and that there's a chance that they just don't give a fuck about the dollar and they're just, yeah, print it. Yeah. Yeah. Spend it, do whatever. And then you see what's also happening in the real estate market. It kind of points in that direction that, oh. Dude, here, here, one more thing to make it just how crazy things are. So you guys know the-, the <laughs> No, you guys Come know on, the- man. You know the, you know the fake, uh, uh, the, the joke uh, blockchain currency Dogecoin? Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah, Doge. Yeah. They Which, literally they they, Doge they started as a joke, yep. right? Mm -hmm. I thought I I thought I heard something that mm -hmm. it was it was not it's even that meme dog on it. Yeah, that's yeah. the dog, the, the meme dog, the Doge Doge dog or whatever yeah, is, yeah. The, is the cover. Anyway, it is now the, the it's now valued at more than <laughs> Ford. For like the, the company, the company Ford. Ford that's been around forever, one of the How? great American companies the of all time. Staple company, I, it's worth the more US. than Ford. It's that worth doesn't more even make sense to me. That's what I'm saying. How is that possible? Because of the value of the total the face. perceived value, the value of the total Doge coins right now on the market, so their total value surpassed now the total value of Ford. Oh my God! Speaking of dogs, <laughs> okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Um, <laughs> Back us dude, out, dude. But I mean, this is a little kind of crazy. So, if you have a dog, do not walk it across this very specific bridge in Scotland. Why? Because apparently, I don't know if it, there's there's legends, there's folk lore around this whole thing, but ba basically, uh, they just jump off and commit suicide. What? Yeah, and this has happened with like, like I don't know, like a hundred, a couple hundred of these what? dogs have just jumped off the bridge and committed suicide. What if people are just throwing their dogs off? <laughs> oh, bro, <laughs> you know what I mean? how do I get what? Like, explain that though. Like, is there's even... some weird. Uh, reason that all of a sudden, like, it, in one of the one of the accounts, the lady was like, "Is there you know, water, we're walking across, water underneath, or is there a bridge? What it is a it, bridge over? I, I don't, I'm not sure if there's water, but but basically, uh, you know, the dog just like totally turned into like zombie mode and just like kind of uh, just decided to just wait, leap. Wait, hold on a second. Go back, Doug. Uh, go oh, here we are. Go back. I want to read what you, what was there. So if you back arrow, I'll read it. That's the, so. That's, I mean, it's a creepy looking bridge to begin with. I mean, shit. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah just, I mean, there's definitely some kind of. I feel like jumping off haunted. It says residents, Par paranoia. residents of no. Dumbarton, which is northwest of Glasgow, began calling Overtown, Overton, Overtown, I Overton. That, a yeah. century-old bridge that stretches across a 50-foot gorge, the Dog Suicide Bridge. Local researchers estimate more than 300 have sailed off the bridge. 300? Tabloid reports say it's 600. Oh wow. My God. So they just jump off? I think it's highly likely in all the cases here at Overton Bridge that it was curiosity that killed the dog. Yeah. Yeah, explain that. Maybe there's squirrels. Yeah. There's probably squirrels maybe. underneath. Yeah, some kind really? Of dogs That's, fucking hate some squirrels. Some kind of high-pitched noise or something. You know, some some weird psychotic person that hates dogs. What if, down it's, there just like, what if it's like the Bermuda Triangle, right? What if there's yeah. like some magnetic... Because you know how dogs... I don't know if you guys knew this. They're sensitive to, to, to frequencies. Yeah, you, or, or not just that. The, the You ever seen them turn in a circle and then poop? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they always... Isn't there... Don't they always poop in the same direction? I mean, that's what they say. 
Yeah, like it's, they, it's east. They whatever. orient themselves. You didn't know this? They always one? poop east. Doug, let's look this up and see if this is true. Because I, I, I don't know this. if that's true or not. They, yeah, so they always spin, you know, a couple times. I mean, they my, orient themselves. Yeah, no, my dog definitely does that. I'm trying to. Uh, they orient themselves to the poles or something like that. It's like the magnetic poles of the Earth. So no <laughs> way. That's what I read. Is that that's true? What, I don't know, but that's what they speculate. I'm, I'm like literally. Okay, I walk my dog every morning and every night. Pay attention to the direction. He I, well, I know that's. I'm trying. I think <laughs> yeah. trying to. Think. He has spots where we go. We should bring a compass. Hold on, researchers have found that dogs use Earth's magnetic fields to align their bowel and bladder movements, and they prefer to relieve themselves along a north-south axis. Oh, north-south. Okay, there you go. In fact, canines will actively avoid going to the bathroom in an east-west direction. So here's what I want you to do, Adam. <laughs> get my, get my, <laughs> does he poop in the east? Get my compass out there? The get your west. compass. Get your compass. When your dog's trying to take a poop, move him. <laughs> so that he's east, so he's going east he's like, west, and well, see what he does. I, you know, see if he stops pooping. So he, so that it's he kind of it funny off. you're bringing this up because I was cra- just him and I, right? Just Mozzie and I were walking last night, and he cracks me up because he does have these little areas that were we're, we're on our walk, and there's this couple of specific areas that he always ends up having. And I, I, to me, I think of it as it's the distance, right? He's walked off enough, his metabolism kicks up, and that's about where he needs to poop almost every time. But he always goes in this like bush area and he does the circling around and he's like, I mean, he gets in a position that does not look comfortable. Like the bush is like sticking him in the eye and then he's got one underneath. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, why not move over like six yeah. inches to North the south, bro? Right. Well, now that you, now well, it makes sense a so, little bit. My, my friend's dog, I think is the most brilliant. He, he goes around, does his spin thing, but then he always backs himself up against a tree or a fence. And so he like looks directly ahead, but he, he always shits like right on top of a fence. Wow. Yeah. So this is cool, right? So if you're in the woods, let's say you're out in the woods somewhere with Mozzie. Yeah. And you're fucking lost. <laughs> like, dude, where am I going right now? Take a Wait shit. till he takes a shit. Yeah. Ah, there's north. <laughs> <laughs> We're going this way. Yeah. yeah. Please poop. We're, it's late. The sun's going down. Oh, yeah, I got to yeah. figure out where I'm going. That's funny. That's yeah. hilarious. Dogs are the best. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of poop, uh, so I ran out of my usual protein, had to go to the store and get a, another competitor vegan protein oh no and i do this every once in a while right i How run out you and i'm like i want to hit my protein you just want to torture yourself and so i get you know i don't want to say the brand but i get a vegan because i can't have dairy so people who don't know this uh i have a dairy intolerance so any whey protein would just destroy me so i go with vegan and normally i use the organifi protein but this time didn't have any wanted to have some extra protein i bought some other brand vegan protein right fucking terrible bro it's like it's like you. It's like well, you mowed the, the lawn. Well, it's like you mowed the yeah. lawn and then you put it in a bag and then added chalk. It's like shavings. And then you're like, let's just make it chalky to make it even worse. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, a little dirt and, in there. And I don't even digest it as well as the as the. Oh, that's fiber. frustrating. Very frustrating. So, yeah. but it's also made me happy because it's like, all right, we're, we're, we're ours is still you yeah. know the one we work. Well, was with it like is the pea best. protein or is like because you know they do? Do, do you think that's the reason why Organifi is so good? Is because they have a blend? Is right. you think that's part of what the and blend, it's Not just one. The blend is what gives it the the better amino acid profile, right? Because some the thing with plant proteins is they tend to not have, single plant proteins tend to not have as beneficial of amino acid uh, profiles as uh, animal sources of protein. Mm-hmm. But if you, bl- if you use different sources of vegan proteins, you can create better amino acid profiles. And it probably tastes better that way. And, too. and, and then, of course, I, I don't know what else they do to make it taste yeah. good, but it's it's not artificially flavored, so that's good. But it makes me happy because I had the gross one. I think it was brown rice protein. I think that's the one I had. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was like, oh, man, mm. it was, <laughs> you, you cough afterwards and <laughs> comes out. And, yeah. yeah. And yeah, not good. And then yeah. later it wasn't good. That's why I said poop. You know, we were talking about, uh, you know, future and what, you know, what predicting some stuff, right? Have you guys seen the company? I, I think it's called Light. It's called the Light Phone, but it looks like it's a J the way they write it. So it's J I G H T. I'm not sure if you. So look up Doug Light Phone, like G-I-G-H-T. spelled the right way first, L I G H T, and then see if that comes up. And if it doesn't, then it might be J I. <clears throat> um, the, it's the idea is that it's like a, a, basically a minimalist phone. And their whole like, like a brick cr- phone, yeah. They're 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 uh, the, it came up on like it was an ad. I was watching TV. There's the, one for old people too. I forgot what it was called, but it was there just, it is like, right, the there, there is right there. Right there, right there. Cricket or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 So it's wireless. minimalist cell phone, which is what. So it has. Oh, there here we go. Thank you. Good. Does it have to give us the little commercial here so these guys can see? Like this is what I got hit with this. I think this ad right here. Really? Hit that. Yeah. Hit that. Like though. it's a phone. Yeah. It does it, almost nothing. It, it, <laughs> you can call hey, people. Hey, the commercial shows someone playing a record player. 
<laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like to do things the old Hell way. No, that's exactly the I, that, I'm that, a hipster, it's, yeah. so it's, I'm ironic. It's we interesting. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, that's their whole pitch, right? Is to try and like, get see, us back to being more social it's creatures and time for yourself. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Now there's now a market for people who are like, I can't do this. I need to get rid of this. This, you know, addicting. Like, this is why social human media interaction. Well, this is also what. That's what I'm gonna get my kids. Okay, this is what That's also the they're gonna get. This is what also kids. keeps yeah. me from being such an alarmist about something like you know when we speculate about oh my god like we used to, I mean I remember I talked about uh, you know the the uh, what you call book that I mentioned a thousand times on this podcast mm. and how I was Adam so Ad Adam Adler. No, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's Al Alter. Yeah, Alter. Alter. I said it wrong. Oh, yeah. it's so yeah, it's I so conditioned. It. Yeah, but uh, you know. I, I, there's this, if it's that scary, that bad, so many people are starting to see uh, the, the consequences of, of kids being addicted to tech and things. Eventually, this comes out. Eventually, somebody goes, okay, there's tens of thousands, millions of people that agree and see this, and if we create something like this, I bet you there's a bunch of people that are going to move away from the iPhone and stuff like that. As, as amazing and as awesome it is for half the population, the other half might go... I hope so. I hope so. I hope it's not addict so addicting that it, we, it's too late before. But I, you know, look, Jessica off all social media. You know, you guys know that. That's what I'm saying. That she you took herself off. I know, people, so Courtney. People are moving in that direction. So that, if we didn't have this business, I would not be yeah. on social media. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah. So I, so I do think there's more. Now I don't know if Doug, you can look up to see if it's if it the company's successful. I don't know how well it, it's doing or not. Like right. a, the commercial. I yeah, think it's nice. kind of a novel idea these days. Yeah, and. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it, you know. Truth yeah. be told. Seriously, I wouldn't. I like see I like I have um I like having the option, but then also being aware of its addictive properties and then going, okay, like I ha I have to sell. I'd rather self-regulate than somebody else tell me. It if does. it has a camera mm. on it, that will that would be good because I do value the, the fact that I have a camera in Indeed, my, yes. especially with the yeah. baby. I, I oh, I'm, that's one of the best features yeah. is you know I, my uncle because I mean it's it's nice you know you see your kid do something and you can just pull it out and he, he, when I when I first yeah. had Max, my uncle uh, he he called me and he's just like go go get yourself a little camcorder and and record everything right now like do not waste a day Rick he goes phone. well you know it's so funny i did though i listened to him. i still went out and go i went and bought it and for like the first like i don't know a couple months i would get it out and I, i'm like what am i doing yeah. the phone shoots and, and i actually think so because i bought like some yeah, one of those jvc ones well like, it's like a little tiny one you guys have seen me probably with yeah. it before I, I i think i pay like a 100 200 bucks for it it's like it was really cheap and it, it says, I think it says it, it's shot in high def, but when I look at the video compared to my iPhone video, the iPhone video is better. Oh, it's Dude, on all that. How yeah. funny is that? It's 100, 200 bucks. I, my dad was, he loved, back in the day, he loved tech too, right? And he would always buy the latest grade. He got the 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 recorder, the VHS one. So literally, it was like this big. It was you, you put a VHS in it. It's on your shoulder. You're holding it like this. You used this. to have to wear the VCR attached on it like a little purse. Yes, thing. or you have that right. <laughs> yeah. You're walking. It was yeah. a big machine, and it was back then. The, it was like three hundred or four hundred dollars back then for yeah. inflation. Yeah, you rest it on your shoulder. It's like this big yeah. old like no. It was rectangle. so it was okay. So you had the big thing like that Sal was talking about, and yeah, then with, you, a hand, I, with a handle, and right. then you actually had a, a thing that went around your shoulder, and it was the VCR. So it had to attach the VCR because that's where the cassette would go. And be, oh, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. and, and they were I would just have this, and they were yeah. expensive. Yeah, but I love I love the like yesterday. You guys saw the video I sent you. So my mm. my son, right, five five and a half months old, crawling. And he's he's not crawling. He's creeping. They no, bro, creeping. that's crawling. Nah, it was it was kind of like he's, he's, army doing, dude, doing the army you, thing. Okay, listen, if you can take if you can take a ball and you can put it three feet away from or four feet or whatever it was from your son, and he can go get it, he's crawling. Does dude. that call? I thought that was called creeping. Whatever. That's what I saw. I mean. Semantics, come on, dude. Come on, like really? Like, I don't mean like he, he wasn't going up talking to other baby chicks. So, yeah, like, creep. Hey. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if he's doing that already, it's only a matter of time before he's you know full on. Oh, you know, it's so fun too because I'm watching him do this. I'm like, oh shit, and I'm trying not to get like too loud because if I do, he'll stop. And so I'm like, Jessica, Jessica, look. So she looks. Then my daughter comes, and we get my son right. So everybody's watching him, and we're trying to do it kind of like nonchalant because yeah. otherwise he he won't he'll pay attention to us. So he's doing his thing. We're all watching. He goes over to grab the ball, and we're like, "Yeah!" Everybody's cheering. Like, this is so great. <laughs> he's this kid's gonna grow up thinking he's the most awesome thing in the world. Uh, you know, he's got these. You old, sent that over to me, know. and it actually made me go back because those were some of my favorite moments of of Max. Was that that was like our first like cool milestone of like you know trying to get him to crawl, and then watching him finally crawl across the room to me. So. 
you would you'd sent that and then I went down the rabbit hole of like watching all my videos. Okay, so now your son's old. He's not even I mean you're he's still young, but yeah. he's old enough to yeah. where when you look at stuff like that, doesn't it feel like God, that went by so fast? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, mm -hmm. no it does. It it, it flies. I so It's so crazy. I actually you're in the phase that I think is not fast. You're in the the first 6 months I felt it was like twilight zone slow. Mm -hmm. And then But when's it gone? When it's gone and you look back. Yeah, but like but there's a, to me like there's a there's very little milestones in that first 6 months. I mean, you're experiencing one that's pretty early. I don't yeah, think they start to accelerate, don't they? Yeah. Oh yeah, once the well, once you're not getting sleep, you're just looking at the clock. You yeah, know, it's just like yeah. That's why and, it goes to so slow. Right. And then one year hits, and then I feel like it's like one thing after another. Oh, he's he's walking. Oh, he's pointing. Oh, he understands me when this. And like it's like there, there's milestone after milestone after milestone after and that is when I feel like it's like really accelerated. I mean, I look back now at one month. I go, oh shit, wow, his face has changed so much and yeah. he was doing this, now he's doing that. No, he does this thing, right? He's, I mean, he's only, like I said, he's only five months, but now he's doing this thing where he wants to get my, you know, babies obviously cry when they want to get your attention, mm -hmm. but he's figured out that he can just get our attention by just making a sound. So now what he'll do, he'll be playing and we'll all be, you know, either we're watching TV or we're hanging out and then you hear him go, eh, eh. And you look, and he's looking right at you, and I'll do it back to him. Huh? And, was, and the whole house starts going back and forth. You know what I find, it's really, which I, you're going to be coming up on all this stuff soon, which will be interesting because you have such a gap between your kid's age, and, and I don't know what it was like when you were raising your two oldest. I do remember what it was like raising my two younger brother and sisters, and like, there's so much like cool tech and new stuff. Yeah. So in, this isn't tech, but this is a cool new stuff that exists now that did not exist when they were kids is um, these coloring books that are um, you, there. It's like a pen that he gets and he can mark all he, it doesn't mark anything. So he could draw on the counter, on the walls, it does. But it, on the book that it comes with. When you when he marks it, it it's like watercolors and it changes so it looks like he's cut so he feels like he's coloring. Now is it still tactile? So it's not electronic. No. Okay, so it's still tactile. It literally looks just like the old school Crayola highlighter wow, pens. That's cool. Except for they're like they're white tips. Mm -hmm. And then when he colors on these pieces of paper, the paper turns the colors of whatever the pen is wow. supposed to be. Oh, that's cool. But he could draw on anything and it doesn't mark anything up. He has the same thing for his bath. So we have these 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 crayons that are designed to go in the water and he can draw all over the bathtub. You got markers on this and then you just one wipe and oh, it goes. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's brilliant. That's Be really cool. Because you think when, when you're, when you had, I remember having yeah, my little. that's a hack. Yeah, it's a huge hack. Yeah. I, my little brother and sister. It, oh, they fucked the house. Dude, oh. cleaning the walls of like, yeah, <laughs> that's such a common thing. Kids will just like draw everywhere. Oh, have they, yeah. have these, has he thrown anything in the toilet yet? Has he figured that out yet? I, didn't I tell you, did I not bring this on the what podcast? Oh, I didn't bring this up on the podcast. Maybe you this, did. This yeah, set. you did. No. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, yeah. Remember, I because I I hold him. Some, I was holding. Oh, him, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I yeah. was peeing, and he threw it in the bed. <laughs> now has he has he gone off on his own to figure this out? No, no. Okay, so yeah, that's no. coming. Yeah, no. <laughs> so they'll do that at some point. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't. Katrina, done. where's my uh, mind pump shirt? You know? Yeah, he's really. Why I is mean, the ceiling dripping? I know. I keep saying this, but I feel like I'm gonna jinx myself. But he's. He's so mellow. He's chill. He's not destructive. Uh, you know, I wonder if that's going to change. Like, you know, everyone's he's a teenager. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he just is not. And, and he still is at, and he, he definitely is at that age where he is uh, challenging what he's not supposed to do. So I've, I've told you guys that Katrina's trained the whole no thank you thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I have uh, the speakers in my uh, living room and upstairs are both are exposed, right? So there's no screen on them or anything. Mm -hmm. You can go walk over and like push right on the, the subwoofer and stuff. And uh, he knows not to touch the speakers. Like, no, thank you. And like we've grabbed him before, mm -hmm. but he'll walk over there and, you know, and he'll do the like, he's going to put his hand on it and then look back at me to see and kind of mess with me. And so he's doing little things like that, but... He doesn't run over and go, bro. Now you know what you got to do. This is what you do. He'll never touch him. Wait till he goes over. Wait till he touches it and turn the turn it on. So, ah! it's <laughs> yeah. He'll never to touch traumatize him. him. <laughs> it's great <effective. laughs> Now, do you, do you, with him, before you put him down, do you dim the lights? Do you manipulate the... Oh, yeah. The, you guys do all that. So we... Because that makes a big difference. No, Katrina and I have gotten really good about this. I mean, I talked, I've talked on the show before about the whole nerdy blue blocker thing and how... You know, I used to never do anything like that, and I used to scoff at people that mm -hmm. would wear those things and stuff. But you know, and, and and maybe it's a getting older thing. Like I don't know. Like, but for sure, it makes a difference because when I, if my kids forget, my older kids forget to put them on. Mm -hmm. 
Um, more often than not, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them the next morning. How was your sleep? Uh, and I could tell they were tired because they yeah. didn't sleep as well. When I have them put it on, not only do they go to bed earlier, but they get better sleep. Now, I noticed with me, big time. Well, no, and I just, a, well, I just know. I look at the clock. Okay, yeah. and I want to go to bed in an hour and a half. Put on my Felix Grays. And I'm going to get better sleep. You know, it's funny. Like, uh, so I finally got my, my kids like actually enjoy putting them on now, but like my youngest was a lot like me, like back in the day. So did you guys ever have this thing about like, I'm not a poser. Like I, so like whatever, like people were rocking like certain clothes, like they're a skateboard, but they weren't a skateboarder, you know, or they're they're wearing like cowboy boots. You're not a cowboy, you know? And so his whole thing was like, I don't need glasses, you know, like I I see perfectly. Why am I doing? And I'm like, and so I had to like, it's, it's been a long long time of like convincing them that like this is like a protection thing from like all this screen you light that you, you're taking in and it's affecting your sleep well you know max is so young so i obviously can't put glasses on him right now but we i we won't even let him watch anything even close to bed because mm-hmm. once that sun goes down like definitely no ipad no tv no nothing because i notice a huge difference in his behavior oh yeah like when we have different people watch like obviously with the nanny like she has certain like rules and schedule like what to do with him but occasionally we have family friends or somebody that watches him and we're not like i mean if someone especially if it's a family member doing a favor right if i have like his his aunt or something come over and watch him like katrina and i do dinner or something i'm not gonna be like don't let him watch tv it's like whatever this one time it's not a big deal but it's it is there is a stark contrast in if he got you know hours of television in the day versus none whatsoever so you can tell it stimulates their brain it's totally it's and we've done this enough times to like tease it out and i just think that some it's it's such a um it's such a common practice in most people's homes that they don't really they don't know they don't know they just think that their kid is being kind of high strung today or he had a hard time going to sleep but katrina and i have made we've done many many times of like he's he's gone weeks with no television no ipad no anything all outdoor activity and and you can literally see the way he, he his behavior is how he sleeps and how easily he goes down yeah it's important to monitor that and watch and see what affects them so much yeah. those are the two things is uh get sunlight when the sun is out it sets your circadian rhythm and that helps you produce more melatonin at night and get better sleep and then avoid uh, electric lights or light in general or if you have to or glasses that block uh, the blue light. Those two things alone are natural. It's not a drug. It's not a pill. It's nothing to, you know, it's not a sedative. It, it's your body naturally sleeping the way it's supposed to and by I think, doing those things. And I think mm-hmm. that most people don't recognize that because you've probably never teased it out. It's okay. Everybody has at least one, if not multiple TVs in their, in their house. Right. It's, most people now have smartphones and or iPads right. or all of the above. It's such a common practice that I doubt there's very, very many people that have young kids that have actually said, what would happen if we just did one week? One mm-hmm. week and we just agreed that we're going to, mm-hmm. every time the kids want to play, we're going to go outside. Or if it gets bored, we're going to entertain, find ways to just not use tech for one week. And I guarantee if you did that, you would see it. Never now, I'm not saying that we need to live like that all the time. I mean, I think I told you already. I came out and said on the podcast, I didn't want to even introduce it to him, and I've totally broken that rule completely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I still respect the the power of it and the and the difference of his behavior when I let him and I when I and I don't let him use it. So we were we're very careful of like how much time that he gets of any screen, whether it be a That's television good. or iPad, because it directly affects his behavior. Hey, real quick before you listen to the second half of this podcast, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go check out some of our free guides. We have fat loss guides, muscle building guides. We have guides for personal trainers and much more. They're all totally free, mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Ryan McClellan, 0724. What is the best way to build the peak of the bicep? Oh, the good old bicep peak. We, we haven't actually addressed this in a while, right? The whole uh, targeting a part of the muscle. Yeah. This was a, a old Mind Pump episodes when we came after uh, your old boy over there, Stepani. Yeah, well, he said he said some stupid shit about making your bicep longer yeah. with a preacher curl. Anyway, yeah. back, so back in the day, the, they would say that, you know, obviously exercises, different angles and all that stuff, they all have different value, right? And, and in some cases... You can work on different parts of a muscle. For example, with the chest, because of the multiple attachments along the sternum, it is plausible to work the upper chest and the middle part of the chest and the lower chest. 
But with muscles like the bicep where the attachments on the other end are so close to each other, there's two heads, that you're, you're trying to work one over the other, you're kind of wasting your time. Now, back in the day, what they would say is, well, this exercise works the bottom of the bicep. It'll make your arm longer. This one works the peak. It's going to make the, bi the bicep a little taller here. And this one works the roundness. And this one does also – makes it thicker. And this was all back in the in the 70s and 80s, right, during the kind of weeder uh, yeah, bodybuilder area? I think it got legs, too, because when you do some of these exercises, you do feel more tension – in a squeeze right. or in a stretch. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, oh, this is definitely working that part. Yeah. I just I feel it more there, which you can manipulate the strength curve and yes. there, and there's value to doing that, right? So there's not not value in doing, you know, a variety of different bicep exercises. I think there's uh, it's very important to manipulate a you know the angles and that's the right. stretch. That's and right. All the stuff. position of the elbow and where where the most tension is on there. So th there's tremendous value in in utilizing it, but the answer to this right is just I mean it's uh, in order to work the peak of the bicep or develop the bicep more, the best thing that you can do is to do the things that you're not doing for your yeah. bicep. Is just the, build is, your biceps. Is the yeah. vary it right? Yes, yes. Yeah, but that's just it though, right? So, you know, if you get or here's the mistake I made as a, as a young young kid who was training a lot of biceps because I care I wanted this right. Uh, you know, I got really good at doing these, you know, alternating dumbbell curls. I mean, I did that and then like a machine preacher like a, a, a thousand times over and watched my strength get better and better and better and better at it. And I'm like, oh, I'm really strong in this area. But then I didn't really notice my biceps develop anymore. Well, one of the worst things that I could do in that situation is to keep doing those same exercises all the time in hopes that it's going to continue to show progress in the, the size or the peak of my bicep. The best thing that I could do is to learn other variations of, yeah. of bicep curls and d different elbow positioning, which would manipulate and change the strength curve. That was the best thing that I could do to yeah. develop my biceps. Yeah, the more. exercise that they said back in the day that worked the bicep was your concentration curl, right? Anything where the tension is at the squeeze mm -hmm. of the exercise. Now, there's value in that, but it's not working the peak of the bicep any differently than uh, exercise where it maybe felt more at the stretch, like a like a preacher curl or even like an incline curl. The reality is if you want a good, you know, complete bicep workout, look at elbow position and look at tension, right? So I like to pick exercises where my arms are by my sides, traditional dumbbell curl, barbell curl, maybe one where elbows in front of me, there's your preacher curl, and maybe one where an elbow is behind me, like a mm. drag curl or an incline curl. And then your full range of motion, uh, you chin up, you know, something where oh. you're going through the entire range and you're getting tension with the, throughout the entire muscle. So underrated, yeah. right? A, 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 pal a palms, like a supinated grip chin up where you're squeezing the biceps and a lot of people aren't strong enough to do this yeah but if you are super intense it's so underrated as an incredible bicep exercise in fact it's one of the best bicep exercise it's a compound exercise for your biceps that's one of the best ones I, uh, that i yeah. can think of but yeah you can't with the biceps you can't focus on the peak or the bottom or length you can't lengthen it or shorten it the attachments are where they are you can get make it bigger or smaller but you can't change the. That's what. That's what. What's this is what happens when you do too much mirror in time. Mir <laughs> they, they, don't even, they don't even know. <laughs> they don't even know. <laughs> they don't, they don't, don't even, even know, know dude. <laughs> they don't even know. Next question is from Ali P. Fit. Do thermogenic fat burners actually do anything? Oh, Boy, we, who picked these questions I today? Did, bro. These are like we're fun. Well, you were going down <laughs> like the, super old school yeah, like these, bodybuilder. Well, these are all questions that I, we've answered probably a hundred times. But back in the days, I, we haven't talked about some of this stuff in a long time. But I'm glad you are because I just got a a text message yesterday from a, a buddy of mine who sent me over like some supplement company that I'd never heard of, and he's like, "Oh, my friend of a friend started this. Could you look at him and just tell me what you think?" and you know, at first glance, I'm like, oh, it's, you know, pretty standard. There's no proprietary blends. It looks like the non-GMO. Non I said, <laughs> but don't, like I said, <laughs> don't waste your money on all the, the, the fat burner ones and the claims, all those. I was like, it's, it's, and those are the most popular, right? Those are sold the well, most. Well, because it's targeting the pain point that everybody has. I know, I know. But yeah, it, it is worthless. Absolutely worthless. Yeah. I mean, you're talking. You're. We talk about the analogy of supplements being like the spoiler on the Honda, like fat burners. Well, I don't even know where where that would. They're the sticker. That's the that's yeah. the air freshener. There you go. Yeah. That's the sticker. There you on go. The car. That's, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. That's the K and N sticker. On the car. <laughs> yeah, it's the sticker. So here's what you'll get with thermo thermogenic <laughs> fat burners. Thermogenic meaning that they increase the amount of calorie burn in the body. Do they do that to some extent? Maybe a little bit. But really, what's the value in a fat burner? Why do they work for some people? Because they do for some people. Some people take fat burners, 
Back in the day, the most popular fat burner, the one that was supported by studies, was the ephedra mm -hmm. caffeine aspirin stack, the good old ECA stack. Oh, you felt that. Now, you took it, and you would lose weight, and people were like, this is burning body fat. No, not necessarily. It's a very strong stimulant and appetite suppressant. So if you take it throughout the day, because they used to recommend taking three servings, right? I don't mm -hmm. care if it was hydroxy cut or, it was like legal meth. or Xenadrin or what I did was I just bought e each of them independently and took my own. You take them three times a day. They suppress your appetite. So if you've ever been on a strong stimulant, if you've ever taken like prescription Adderall or Ritalin, you know that you don't want to eat much. And that's where the weight loss comes from. Now that, some, that and then the the movement and the yeah. jitters. You, know, you, you, the, you, you, you bring you bring up lots of lots of energy. Yeah, you bring up the, something like Adderall, restless I mean, leg and all that. Kind I of mean, stuff. if you're somebody who's never done something like that, or if you've never had you know 600 milligrams of caffeine in a day or something like that, watch what you do. You're so amped and jittery and moving all day. So the, the those little ticks all day long. Add up. Mm -hmm. So you figure all that moving and the suppressing of the appetite, this is where the magic comes in. It's not because something in that supplement is actually burning fat. Right. Now, someone may be watching or listening and think, oh, that's a good idea. That's what I want. I want to suppress my appetite, and I want to be hyped and be energized. So here's the problem. The body adapts very fast to those effects. Receptors start to get down-regulated. Your body stops producing or starts producing less of its own energy-producing chemicals. And in a very short period of time, okay, let's use caffeine as an example. That's a very common stimulant. Everybody has, has, uses caffeine. Think back to when you first used it, how amazing you felt. Now think about how it feels now to take it months or years later when you have it every morning. Now it just makes you feel normal. And if you don't have it, you feel like dog shit. This is what happens with fat burners. They work in the short term, but then your body adapts. And now I need them just to feel normal. And then when I go off of them, which you will eventually, because uh, otherwise it just feels terrible. When you go off of them, you're going to have like a two-week period where it's the reverse. You have a lower energy, you feel like dirt, and your appetite goes through the roof through this period of this process. So what you end up seeing with this, if there is weight loss, is you see weight loss, plateau, weight gain when you go off. So no, fat burners are, unless you want the energy and you want the appetite suppressing effects and you, and you don't mind that it's short term and you have a plan for post rebound or whatever, which most people don't, but if you do, then maybe there's some, some specific value, but I, I never in my life recommended thermogenic fat burners to clients. I've never in my life said to a client, I know we're trying to burn body fat. And I don't want to say never. I actually did back in the day when I was, when we were taught that this was effective. Once I learned that this is totally ineffective and probably doing people uh, harm, I never would tell people to take a fat burner to help them burn body fat. Next question is from young Devin five. What do you think about battle ropes, and when is a good time to implement them in your workout? Oh, I remember when battle ropes They're became fun. A, a thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, I remember like all the functional practitioners out there. Like this, this became you know one of their staple go to moves. And and honestly, it it was it was fun for conditioning, and I thought it was like a novel stimulus. But uh, I, I always struggled with implementing that into an actual program and a routine other than, you know, trying to get, uh, you know, excess movement. So uh, for me, I just look at it as another way to kind of add in activity. Uh, you know, maybe it's on a recovery day or maybe you're, uh, you know, your sport specifically where, where you have to move your hands really fast, you know, somehow. And so maybe there's some value in it with like MMA and boxing and that kind mm -hmm. of community. Uh, but in terms of, you know, your everyday average person, it's, it's somewhat of a novel type of, of fitness tool. I don't really see like a it's ton like, of value. It's to like it. jumping rope for tough guys. <laughs> so it's jumping rope uh, for tough guys. I, I liked it, dude. Yeah. It's fun. I know you did it for a while. Yeah, you I did him, do it. I mean, I had him exactly. For, I had him. <laughs> that's why I thought it's right. He's jumping like, rope he's for like, tough guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's right. That's, right. How do I? Let, I don't see you doing this. <laughs> skipping. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Justin's like, "Fuck that! I'll do this that, all day. Yeah, this looks way cooler." Yeah. Yeah. How do I? Hey, hey, this is what's happening. He's working out, right? He's got his headphones on. He's like, "How do I fucking let everybody in the gym know I'm functional? Yeah, and that I could fight. You can't do this. I'm gonna grab." 
I'm gonna grab these ropes. And start swinging. Yeah, 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 I mean, get rid of the ropes and then do that doesn't yeah. look really cool. I mean, I, I had him. I had him. I had him for boot camp. You know, back this was back when I, I've talked before, like when I was running boot camp classes. Yeah. And it's a conditioning tool. Yeah, it was a, a great way to keep people busy. You know, it's you know, it's <laughs> what do we do between what do we do between the burpee station <laughs> and the step up? It station? replaced the, the the jogging in place. It did. Yeah, it did. It really does. Here, you know? here, hold on and, to these. And, and for sure, there's somebody right now watching. There's some trainer who's so offended right now because you he, know you do that shit for that reason. Yeah, you know you to keep your client busy so they before they do the next exercise. <laughs> because, oh man, call that. Because really, the you know the the people that try and make the claims of like the the shoulder movement and the thing the benefit like because okay you could sell anything right I could give if I had to sell ropes I could sell you on why it's great but the the truth is the 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 real benefits of benefits of it are not that much higher than somebody that literally doing jumping jacks in place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. What, the, the Unless there's like a sport-specific reason for it. You're right. right. There's no other... Yeah, yeah. I, and, and of course, right away, I know the the the, the hardcore battle rope guys are like, oh, you, what are you talking about? Have you ever done the you know the the, the hammer move and the this move? And it's, <laughs> it's you know, say, is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. Is that what that's called? <laughs> no. What do they call it, Justin? Uh, I, I don't know. know. You okay, yeah, I don't uh, even yeah, know. It's better when I do. Double waves, yeah, bro. Yeah, double yeah. waves. I mean, you you could you could try and make the case that oh it's working this muscle and you get this core movement it's like okay i can also make the case for burpees and jumping jacks yeah. it's like it's part it's in the same category it is right? it's yeah. in the same category of just you know burning calories keeping the body moving you're going like, to get good, you'll get you'll get stamina endurance you could get a lot of it in your shoulders and your back you can do power moves with it i mean you can yeah. do slams and, and get your whole body involved and so i mean it's it's sort of a safer way to implement some power moves in there but like honestly yeah, it's Dude, very specific. I remember when it became a thing, I was watching, I don't remember what I was watching. I think it was uh, The Ultimate Fighter, the reality show. And I see them using battle ropes. I'm like, oh, this is going to be in a gym now in the next month because it's cool and fighters are using it. And sure enough, uh, that's what you ended up I seeing. still think it's a missed opportunity. They should have had like the ropes where it's two ropes and then a, a guy on the other side. So we're really battling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fucking battle you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to rip that your arms off. That happen. You right? son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't, gotcha. we, didn't we have a guy come out here and shoot some YouTube videos on the battle Yeah, rope? and he's great. He, he has all yeah. kinds of like good information around it. And uh, it's just like, again, it's a novel, it's a novel type of fitness product. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so I guess getting back to the original question, like, what do we think about? What was a good time to implement them in your workout? The, it, 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 if I was bored of stairmaster or elliptical or running on the treadmill that day, yeah. that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah. or would, rowing. It's like it's a. It's or if another, you're doing like a conditioning type workout where you're trying to build stamina, it's and you want to do maybe upper body stamina, oh, yeah. or some lower body stamina. You do a crazy circuit with now that if, and a rower and and yeah. an assault bike. Now, if you're doing it for power. Totally different. When you're doing it for power, you don't do it to, for, to fatigue. So the same rules apply for any power movement. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it to fatigue till your shoulders burn. You're doing explosive. You're expressing speed. And you're stopping before you get fatigued. In that case, I could see the case for it to be done at the beginning of a workout. If, yeah. I'm, explos if I'm explosive with it, I'll spend 10, 15 minutes doing that, then going into my traditional Yeah, workout. and it gives you somewhat of a tangible thing to uh, objectively look for. Like if I could get the wave to go all the way to the anchor point, like if, if I can do that and get a high enough wave and, and, and force my body down with enough speed, you know, so things like that you can pay attention to. Next question is from one Koner. Are spinal flexion exercises like crunches dangerous for your back? God, I hate, I, it annoys the shit out of me when I hear people, especially fitness professionals, and even worse, doctors and specialists who say things like, this exercise is dangerous, don't do it. Right. And the latest one that annoys the shit out of me is this whole like, don't ever do exercises that flex the spine. Crazy. Huh? Yeah. Does your spine flex and extend? It does. It, it actually does. Guess what happens if you never strengthen those movements? You lose them. Yeah. Yep. Then you end up in a situation where you're you more vulnerable. You accidentally flex your spine because you're in living your life and you end up injuring yourself. I really wish that they would say that, you know, for like when they gave that advice, it would be like, you know, for liability reasons, I have to tell you this. And then they 
went in to explain like in more depth because I know that's the reason why this is like you I don't think a, a doc at least I hope a doctor is is not that stupid that there's not benefits in strengthening that movement right like even if you even if you just went into basic medicine like you and you you know enough about the body to know that that strengthening that would be of value yeah so, the problem is with the spine here's the issue with the spine right like, like all joints now the spine is made up of, of many 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 moving parts and joints. And the problem is when you allow it to move to its end range of motion, meaning the joint can no longer flex. It can no longer flex. And what's stopping it is its own, the joint itself. And then you add load, and then what's supporting the load isn't your muscle, but rather the end range motion of the joint. Now you cause problems because... Now what's holding that weight or whatever are your discs mm -hmm. is the spine itself. Yeah, it's but in, a, in an exercise like a crunch on the floor, it's like there's very, very – What are no. you talking about? Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. there's well, nothing – What's the alternative? There's, yeah. there, there's nothing going on there that's that's bad. If you're doing yeah. them properly – look, I did a this post on this. This is the stupidest one I've heard because I've definitely heard deadlifts, and I've actually gotten – my brother-in-law was like, oh, my doctor told me not no, to No, I've heard this where they say uh, every exercise for your core needs to be a neutral spine because that's what you need to strengthen. Oh, you've heard that? Someone I said, have heard that wow. before. Uh, which is insane. So, well, we, I, so we move robotically. I mean, forever. I understand like a, a full setup maybe for somebody who has just came out of like back surgery or some issue and they're extremely- Oh, there's, there's exceptions, of course. If right. you have like a fused spine, you got to be right. careful with how you move. Right. Or but I mean, even that person though, uh, a crunch, I mean, your, your, your back is supported by the ground. And when you crunch, you're only rolling the spine yeah. up a yeah. tiny bit. So how do you get up off the ground? How yeah. do you get up out of bed? Any, ex any movement that you can do with full control, full stability, good Good strength, good mobility is safe. Any movement that is outside of that is dangerous. And it doesn't matter what the movement is. It doesn't matter if we're comparing a dumbbell curl to an Olympic clean, two very different exercises in terms of, of technique. If the dumbbell curl cannot be done with control, stability, strength, and proper mobility, it's dangerous, even though it's a very simple exercise. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you definitely don't want, and with any movement, you don't want a, you don't want your joints to support the movement. What I mean by that is to give you an easier example, because the spine is maybe a little more difficult. If you look at my elbow, right? At some point, my elbow can't extend anymore. And that's not because my muscles won't allow it. My bicep would allow more extension, but it's the actual elbow joint itself. This is it. That's as far as my elbow goes. Now, if I held a heavy weight in this position and I allowed my elbow to hold it rather than tensing my bicep, and holding it yeah, with my so muscle. You're relaxing. Yeah, so my joint is holding it. That's going to cause joint damage. If you do that with your spine, the same thing. So even rounding your back is okay so yeah. long as it's not the spine itself that's supporting you. It's the muscles around. That's and you're why not we your, have muscles. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> why we have muscles. Yeah. So look, if you like our information, if you love our podcast, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a lot of free guides you can learn from on that site. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I notice when I eat beef, I feel energized. You know, maybe you're, you're lacking some nutrients or whatever. Maybe you're lacking iron. So you eat beef and you feel energized. Maybe when you eat vegetables, your digestion improves. And you notice this. And over time, you start to want those foods. This is how you start to mold and shape your behavior in a way that allows you to find success 